Hi, I'm Nolan Stoltz, the composer of the Route 66 Suite for Symphony Orchestra and also for Symphonic Band. And I had to spend eight days in the Los Angeles area at an artist residency in Pasadena called the Residency Project at 880. It was a great time. And so what I figured I'd do is share some pictures and video of some things that uh, were bringing inspiration to this piece that I'm working on. Here's my vehicle parked in front of the artist residency. It's about a mile and a half north of Route 66 in Pasadena. And um, there's the backyard, uh, beautiful space. And here's my bedroom slash studio space. I took a bunch of my Route 66 books with me on my travels and I put it on the bookshelf and I brought a portable keyboard so I can jot down some ideas, uh, spend some time in the backyard as well doing research and and things like this uh, so that was the artist residency sp space um, so there are a lot of different aspects of route 66 that are inspiring the piece and uh, one of them is the buildings of the uh, early years of route 66 such as this gas station from 1915 in rancho cucamonga this uh, hotel 1925 this old auto court from 1920 uh, gas station from 1926, this beautiful building from 1927 in Pasadena, Lincoln Heights, this old building in Chinatown. Now, the current Chinatown, that was not Chinatown when Route 66 went through. Uh, it was actually to the southeast, so this is looking towards that location from 66. But it's very possible that there were Chinese-owned businesses along Broadway, Route 66, just to the west of there. So it's very possible, you know, this road right here, so this is looking north uh, along 66, there could have been some businesses there that, you know, essentially part of Chinatown uh, in a way. Now, um, south of that is downtown L.A., and that's the, the Broadway Theater District. So this is looking north, so this is eastbound from the end of Route 66 or beginning of Route 66. Uh, so there's, of course there's a lot of great old buildings in this area. Now eventually Route 66 went up Sunset Boulevard and so in Echo Park you've got this building from 24, this hotel from 25 in Hollywood, Barney's Beanery in West Hollywood 1920, uh, this motel in the 1930s. Uh, so I'm looking, you know, a lot of these older buildings that would have existed you know, in 26 or around, or at least in the early years. Um, and a lot of them are old theaters. And so an, uh, one of the movements that I'll write will be inspired by old theaters. They could have had movies, concerts, uh, vaudeville, different things. Uh, so, of course, the Broadway Theater District has a lot of these. Here's one example, the Palace Theater from 1911. Um, the California Theater in San Bernardino, 1928. It's right on Route 66. I'm parked right there. Uh, here's the view from the stage in the California Theater. This is where the uh, symphony orchestra plays here. And uh, they still have the Wurlitzer organ from 1928. So here's me standing next to that. Um, Route 66 uh, had a temporary route through Eagle Rock neighborhood of L.A. And uh, there's the Yosemite Theater, 1929. So that would have been in operation when uh, 66 temporarily took that route. Um, but on the original route, there's the Cameo Theater. Now, it's no longer a theater. You can see it's a 99-cent store. Uh, and so you walk in, and there's some, you know, there's a register, some items, but then you walk up a few stairs, and then there's the rest of the store. That was the old theater space. So it's just been repurposed. Another building's been repurposed is the Fox Pasadena. I'm parked uh, right there in front of where the marquee sign would have been. Uh, and so that that's the comparison. So again, this would have been an operating theater of the time of, of 66. Now, I'm also looking at drive-in theaters because that's the sort of evolution of the theaters in the mid-century. So this one is from 1961, uh, doesn't exist. Uh, college campus is there, but they have the sign with the neon. And what I find interesting is that the parking lot has retained the original, uh, those little hills that the car would park up so you're sort of pointed up at the screen. 
I wonder how many of the students know why there's these little mini hills in the parking lot. Uh, so I find that interesting that they kept that. Um, this this uh, theater is great. Uh, 1929 neon, still active. Um, I showed the palace earlier uh, during the day. So here's the neon at night. The Orpheum. Uh, just south of the end of Route 66, but it's in that same theater district, beautiful neon. Uh, and so this connects really well to uh, a movement that I'm going to title Neon Dream. So it's all inspired by neon along Route 66. For instance, the Fair Oaks Pharmacy, 1915, Wolf's Market, 1917 in Claremont. A lot of these old motels have some really beautiful neon. So here's one between Echo Park and Chinatown. Uh, here's a restaurant in West Hollywood. It's right next to the Troubadour famous um, music club. This is in Glendora, beautiful sign, uh, drive through and eat in pastrami place. In Chinatown, there's like this nice neon trim along the architecture there in, the, in this shopping center right there. Now, I normally don't include chains and things like this in in my you know it doesn't really inspire me too much however there this is one example that does because this is a sign especially made for this location it's on route 66 so i think that's really cool so even though it's a big chain and everything i find it really interesting now i'm i'm not just looking at uh lit neon signs um although of course they're much more beautiful but, you know, some of the, 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 the non-lit of closed businesses or abandoned businesses, uh, this one in particular, just because it has the, the music connection, that's the Arcadia Blues Club, their Facebook page is no longer there, but their website is there, so I don't know if they're going to continue as a club or not. Uh, the Whistle Stop in uh, East Pasadena, um, I find this one cool because check out this, uh, this animated neon. So some of the things that... I find this inspiring. Oh, uh, and the neon is actually a Now, some of the animation is very quite simple, and this is going to inspire the music, such as this binary. This binary. So that's going to, I think, affect um, some of the aspects of the music. And the neon dreams music. Um, just with uh, the, the the music to ref the rhythm of the music to reflect. The Uh, this bar barbecue place. Now, not all of the uh, neon signs are animated with the neon, but um, with the bulb lights. So this place dates back to 1848. A dinner here had a, a couple of great bartenders, Janet and, and Monica, sat next to a couple of really cute guys. And, uh, and then I came back a week later. Not surprisingly, Janet was there pouring, but... Mark and Rich were sitting in the same exact seats. So, you know, I got to catch up with a couple of strangers that I had only met a week before. Great guys. Um, let's see. Oh, this one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know much about this, but it seems like it's an artist collective. Uh, but this really cool animated sign. I'm going to have to look more uh, about brain. Okay. Um, Another movement I'm going to compose, 26 gas stations. This is going to be an homage to Ed Ruscha's 26 gasoline station photography book that he published in 1963. Now, in this book, he only puts the name of the place and the city, no explanation, no preface, nothing like this. And so there's very little information. So this was possibly on 66 in West Los Angeles. I took 26 weeks researching where these gas stations were. There were only a few that I have not been able to verify. This is one that I have not been able to verify. I did find a listing for a Don and Bob Seaside service in 1959 at this address. And at that address these days, there is a gas station there. It, it's likely this one. There was another location, I think, Ontario, but it didn't seem likely. Um, so, um, I went to this one and then in the other one in the LA area, 
um, was easier to find because what well, one it says Sunset Strip, so I know it's on Sunset Boulevard. Um, and then I was able to find that it was a half a mile north of 66 in West Hollywood because of this restaurant sign right there. I looked up that restaurant, found a menu, got an address, and the very distinctive uh, shaped window right there, and that building is still there with the same window. So in the place of that Texaco is now a coffee, bean, and tea leaf, uh, and then where the pumps and canopy, that's the parking lot. Now, those are Rouchet's 26 gas stations in his book. I visited all 26. Uh, and there's only two really in, in this area. Um, when I write my movement, um, I'm going to find 26 gasoline stations that I find interesting or that have some sort of personal connection or something. So I'm, it's not going to be, um, I'm, I'm not necessarily re trying to reflect Rouchet's 26. I'm inspired by his book, his 26 but it'll be gasoline gasoline stations like like this one that I find interesting. You know, there's all these modern buildings in this neighborhood in Rancho Cucamonga, and all of a sudden you have this beautiful yellow building with interesting architecture, you know, predating Route 66. Uh, so I find that interesting. So I, I assume this, this will probably be one of them. So that's just a v small taste of the things that have been uh, inspiring this, this uh this music that I'm in the process of writing uh, in the LA area. Again, you know, this this was eight days, and this is only a small portion of the hundreds of pictures I took. So I um, hope you enjoyed a little glimpse into these things that I find interesting in, uh, in uh, Los Angeles.